What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to analyze cryptocurrencies in python so let us get right into it all right so first of all let us take care of a couple of dependencies we're going to have to install some libraries using pip and for this we're going to open up the terminal now if you're on windows you're going to want to open up the cmd so the command prompt if you're on linux just the terminal if you're using a linux subsystem for windows or if you're using this uh, ubuntu terminal on windows here uh, you might want to install it on both of them. So if you want to run the script, you definitely have to install it in the ordinary CMD. If you also want to have the auto completion in an editor like Vim, for example, in a language server, you should also have the packages ready on your subsystem. But the most important part, if you're on Windows, is using the CMD. You just say pip install and then the name of the library. Now, I have installed it on my Windows system already and also on my uh, Linux subsystem, but I'm going to walk you through the library. So first of all, we're going to say pip3 install. If you're on Linux, oftentimes you need to specify pip3 instead of pip. And then you say pip3 install pandas dash data reader. This is the library that we're going to use to get the financial data from the Yahoo Finance API to get the crypto data from the Yahoo Finance API. Then we're also going to need MPL finance even though I'm not quite sure if we're even using it in this script that I have here. Uh, I don't think that we're actually going to need MPL finance, but we're going to use it quite often. Now, let me just check real quick in the recording if I'm not blocking any text. Let me just reposition this here. Uh, then we're going to need pip3 install. Um, what was the next thing? Seaborn is one that we haven't used uh, ever on this channel, but we're going to use it today because we're going to look at correlations between the individual cryptocurrencies. And for this, we're going to need Seaborn. So we're going to say pip3 install Seaborn. Um, and then we're also going to have to install matplotlib, which is usually already installed when you install uh, MPL finance. So you just say pip three install matplotlib and then usually it's going to be installed already. Now also if you have some problems because you're missing numpy or pandas you might want to install those so you say pip3 install pandas and pip3 install numpy but usually as you can see here you, you have all those requirements and then usually it says okay we need numpy and pandas so this should be taken care of. All right so let us get started with the coding. First of all we need to import the libraries that we just installed. So we're going to start by importing pandas data reader as web. Then we're going to import uh, matplotlib.pyplot splt. Then we're going to import mpl finance smpf. By the way as I already said I don't know if we actually are going to need this one. Um, because I imported it in this code that I've written a while ago, but I can't see it being used anywhere. So maybe you don't need that import. Um, however, we're also going to import Seaborn as SNS, and then we're also going to import DateTime as DT, which is a core Python module. Now, after that, we need to ask the question, what do we want to compare the individual cryptocurrencies to? So are we interested in how many dollars they are worth or euros or any other currency? And we need to specify that currency because if I compare the Bitcoin to uh, euros and then I compare, uh, compare Ethereum to dollars, that, that's maybe not the best uh, idea or the best comparison because of course the individual currencies like euros and dollars are actually fluctuating as well. So... We're going to say currency equals and we're going to compare it to the US dollar. Um, then we're also going to specify the metric that we're going to compare. So we're interested in the closing price. We want to know um, the closing price, not the opening price, not the high of the day or the low of the day. We want to know the last value. And uh, we're just going to say metric equals close. And then we're going to specify a range. So we want to know a date range. And for this, we're going to say start equals DT date time. Um, and then we're going to pass a year, a month and a day. And let's say we're interested in all the fluctuations since 2018, first of January, like that. And the end is now. So we're going to say DT date time dot now. This is the current timestamp. Um, and then we're going to have to specify a list of all the cryptocurrencies that we want to compare. So let's say we want to have, um, I'm going to call this crypto, 
Uh, we're going to open up a list here with all the what am I doing here? Oh, I have the wrong keyword. Don't I come go to the German one. There you go. We're going to pass all the individual ticker symbols of the cryptocurrencies. So BTC for Bitcoin, for example, ETH for Ethereum, for example, LTC is I think Litecoin, then we also have XRP for Ripple, then we should have dash, which is four letters. And we're also going to go for SC, even though I forgot what SC actually was. So don't hate me for that. Um, and then we're going to have an empty list called the column names, because when we add the individual currencies, we need to load all of them. Sorry, we need to load all of them. And then we need to combine them into a data frame with the different column names. And for this, we're going to use an, uh, a separate list here. Now, we're going to do this in a way that's maybe not the most professional way of programming. However, it works for this little script, we're just going to set first to true, which means that the next thing is going to be the first thing. And then we're going to immediately set it to false, so that we know the first cryptocurrency that we load is going to create the data frame. And all the others are just going to be joined into that data frame. So we're going to say for ticker in crypto, we're going to load the data from the Yahoo Finance API. And how do we do that? In the same way that we load stock, stock data. So we say data equals web dot data reader. And then instead of passing the ticker symbol of a company like Apple, for example, we pass the cryptocurrency and the currency that we compare it to. So we're going to use an F string here, because we need to format in those uh, values like currency and crypto, or in this case, ticker. And the format is actually first of all, the ticker of the cryptocurrency, then a slash, and then or actually not a slash, sorry, a dash, and then uh, the currency that we're comparing it to in this case, US dollar, like that, then we specify the Yahoo Finance API as a source and start and end as the time frame. And what we're going to do then is we're going to say this is the the first variable here, we're going to say if it's the first, so if this is the first data or data set that we're loading into the script here, we're going to say combined, which is going to be the final data frame with all the combined um, cryptocurrency prices, we're going to say combined equals data. And we're going to take the metric. So in this case, the close value from this data, and we're going to make a copy of it. So we're going to take the full data frame, or actually not the full data frame, we're going to take the data frame, uh, which only consists of I think the index column, which is the date, and then also the metric that we chose so the close metric. And then we're going to take that as the initial data frame, we're not going to create a new one and load the data in there, we're going to um, get rid of all the data that we don't need from this data frame. And then we're going to make a copy of it so that we have a base data frame that we can then actually add some more information into afterwards. And then we're going to say call names dot append this particular ticker, uh, which is going to be BTC ETH and so on. Then we're going to say combined dot columns is going to be call names. So we're going to rename the columns because otherwise we could always have close, 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 and then we could not add the same columns. Because in a data frame that we just load from the Yahoo Finance API, it's not going to say Bitcoin close, it's going to say close, because we know it's Bitcoin. Um, so we need to re rename all of those things. And then of course, we're going to set first to false, because now it's no longer the first one. And if it's not the first one, we're just going to join. So we're going to say combined equals combined dot join. And we're going to join the new data that we have here, the metric from this new data. So the close value of this new data. Uh, and we're going to join this to the combined data frame. And then we're going to, of course, again, say combined columns, or actually, first of all, we need to append to the columns. So call names, dot append ticker symbol. And then we're going to say combined call names, or actually columns equals call names so that we have the updated version here. Um, now, why do I have a bug here? Let me just open up a different one. Oh, it's, it's not going away. So let me just close Vim for a second here and reopen this and now it should be gone. 
Um, and what we can do next is we can go ahead and actually uh, just plot all of this without any correlation chart or any heat map here. We're just going to plot the very basic uh, fluctuations here. But of course, I already made a video already on um, visualizing cryptocurrency data. Uh, the problem is that some cryptocurrencies are way more expensive than others. So for example, um, Bitcoin is way more expensive than Ripple, for example. And because of that, if you plot both of them in the same chart with a linear scale, then you're not going to really see any fluctuations in the Ripple chart because it's so, so small. So what we could do here is we could set the uh, y axis to be logarithmic, which basically means that we're not just going to look at absolute values, but we're going to compare or to scale these values based on um, or, or actually not based on, but we're going to scale them on a logarithmic scale, which means that we're not going to say 10, 100, 200, uh, 300, 500, and so on, but we're going to say 10, 100, 1000, uh, 10,000, we're going to use the same multiplier. So what we do in order to do that is we say plt y scale lock for a logarithmic scale. And now we can actually just go ahead and plot all of these. So we're going to say for ticker in crypto again, we're just going to say plt plot and combined ticker. Now, this works because here we always updated column names. So instead of close, we now have just the ticker symbol here, just Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on as the column name that we need to address in order to get the data. And then we just say a label equals ticker so that we can then display a legend. So we're going to say plt dot legend and location is going to be upper right. And then we're just going to say plt dot show like that. Now I'm going to use the command prompt from Windows here because um, with the Linux subsystem, it doesn't work that well. So I'm going to navigate to the directory Python neural nine, and then I'm going to say Python main dot py. And we're going to wait for a second. And then we're going to see all the individual price fluctuations. If I didn't make any mistakes, obviously but it looks fine. Actually, there you go. So you can see that the chart is logarithmic. I hope this is not lagging too much right now. But you can see that we have um, 10 to the power of zero power of one somewhere here two, three, four, and so on. Um, and even though for example, SC, whatever that is, is way, way cheaper than Bitcoin, we can see uh, we can still see the fluctuations in a very good way. Um, and you can see all those fluctuations, and you can already see that they're quite similar. So for example, those three, even though they have their individual price fluctuations, you can see that they go up and down roughly at the same time, most of the time. And in order to get a better view on a correlation, we're going to also plot a heat map right now. All right, so let us now plot the correlation heat map for this, we're going to delete those lines here. And we're going to get the correlation values. So what we need to do is we need to get all the price movements in percentage points, and then we need to calculate the correlation. And um, fortunately, we can use a command for that or a function for that, we just have to say combined, combined equals combined dot percentage change like that. And then we use the core method, which is for correlation like that C O R R. And then we specify method equals Pearson. Now don't ask me what it exactly does. I know how to calculate correlations uh, in statistics, but I in statistics, but I don't know if the Pearson method is a classic method that I have learned in university. So I haven't looked into that. If you're interested, just Google Pearson correlation, I'm sure you're going to find some pretty neat explanations there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to say SNS dot heat map and then combined and anot equals true. And we're going to choose a color map. So C map equals cool warm. Now you can choose the default one or whatever one you you want, just look up the documentation, you're going to find the different color maps that you can choose. But I think cool warm is uh, the most intuitive for me when I look at it, I immediately know what it's saying. So once we have that, we're just going to run this script again. And then we should see a pretty neat and beautiful heat map once it's loaded. 
and I hope it's not going to lag too much, but there you go. So let me just resize that and you can see what it's doing. So one basically means that it's the exact same thing. So the correlation is one means it's 100%, uh, which is obviously the case if we compare Bitcoin to Bitcoin because the Bitcoin movements map the Bitcoin movements 100%. Um, and you can still see that the correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum is 80%, so 0 0.8. That's a very high correlation still. Uh, it means that there are some differences, but basically when Bitcoin goes up, Ethereum goes up most of the time as well and vice versa. So it, if Bitcoin goes down, Ethereum goes down as well most of the times. Then you can see also Litecoin, Ethereum, pretty high correlations, 0 0.81 here. Uh, one is the highest value and uh, zero, you could say, is the lowest value, which means no correlation. But then you also have negative correlation. So you can go down to negative one, which basically would mean that every time Bitcoin is uh, rising, for example, the other cryptocurrency is falling. So this would be a correlation of negative one without any exceptions. Every time Bitcoin goes up, this other currency goes down. Uh, this is negative one zero basically meaning they have nothing in common. They're completely chaotic and unrelated. And yeah, you can see that they're mostly positively correlated. So you can see even though 0 0.49 is not the highest correlation, there's still some positive correlation. And you can see that most cryptocurrencies move up when Bitcoin moves up. As you can see here, we don't have any negative correlations or any correlations below 0 0.48 as far as I see here. Uh, maybe we could compare more cryptocurrencies here, but the essential idea, you get the essential idea here. You can just load all the individual currencies. By the way, you can do the same thing, not only with currencies, but also with stocks. So instead of using the ticker symbols of these individual cryptocurrencies, you can load Apple stocks here and Facebook stocks. And you can also compare Facebook stock or Tesla stock to the Bitcoin price movements if you want to. So this is uh, a very nice visualization here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.